Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video we'll be starting off a mini series dedicated towards Laravel. And by the end of the series, you'll be pretty much done with all the basics that you need to know in order to get started with creating your own Laravel application. So let's get this started. Alright, so in this video, we'll be mainly focusing on setting up the environment and installing Laravel onto our system and making it so that we can create a new project instead of Laravel. So before that, first things first, what is Laravel? So Laravel is a framework for PHP. So generally when we create web applications, we use PHP as our, you know, backend scripting, right? So, you know, it gets really tedious when you have to create an application which is really large because when you write, you know, native PHP code, it looks like a spaghetti code, which is not that good, right? So in order to, you know, have a structurized format and make it easy for you to write the code and share it with anybody else, the framework which has been created and used widely is Laravel. So Laravel is the framework which is being used worldwide by all the PHP developers to create all PHP applications. All right, so now let's see how we can actually install Laravel onto a system. So there are multiple ways in which we can actually do that. So in order to get started with that, let's actually go to the Laravel website. So this is the Laravel website, that is laravel.com. So in that, let's go to the documentation section. So right now, Laravel version eight is going on. As you can see, we are under the 8.x, that is greater than eight. So in this, you have to go to the installation section. So that is where we are right now. Now, let me zoom in a bit. So as you can see, you have to install Laravel based on the operating system that you have, either macOS, Windows or Linux. So if I click on, you know, Windows, which is what I'm using right now, as you can see, these are the steps that you have to follow in order to install that. So the first thing is that you have to install Docker on your system. Then you have to set up Windows subsystem for Linux, that is WSL2. So if you don't know what that is, it is essentially wherein you install a Linux based operating system, mainly Ubuntu or any other operating system onto your Windows system. And you know, you can use that and execute Linux based commands. So that is one way of doing that. But if you have a lower tier system or if you have a slower net connection, then you might not be able to do this pretty fast because it will take a lot of time because it has to install that operating system directly onto your Windows. And apart from that, if it's a lower end system, it might, you know, be a bit buggy. I don't know for sure. But if you don't want to have that risk, what you can do is that you can go with the other approach, which I'm going to show you right now. So, but if that's not the case, you can directly use this. You can install Docker, set up the WSL2, then link both of this. The documentation is present here. Then I think you have to execute those commands and you'll be pretty much done with, you know, executing all these commands. You know, the steps are pretty neat and clean. So you can just follow this and you should be done. But my suggestion would be to go with the, with the you know, other option, which is, you know, installation via composer. So if you click on this, that is installation via composer, you'll go to this particular section. So in order to actually, you know, use composer to install Laravel, you have to have two things on your system. First one is that you have to have PHP on your system. And the second one is that you have to have composer installed on your system. So let's actually install that. So let's open a new tab and let's type in PHP. Okay, uh, so you have to go with the PHP hypertext preprocessor website, that is php.net. And thus, let's go to the downloads page, click on downloads, and that let's go with the Windows downloads, because that is what I have right now. And thus, you can go with the thread safe option. So you have the thread safe option, right? So for this thread safe, you can download the zip, right? Click on this, and it should download and it should save on your system. So I think I already have it downloaded. Yeah, I have it here. Apart from that, you also have to download Composer. So let's open Composer. Let's search for it. Open the first link that is getcomposer.org. Then that you can click on download and you can, you know, click on download and run Composer setup.exe. So that should download the Composer setup and this is what you should have. Now what you can do is that you can right click on this and you can extract the PHP. If you extract that, you will have this particular file, right? So there are two main things that you have to do in order to actually set this up on your system. The first one is that you have to transfer this particular folder onto your local disk. Okay, you have to go to your local disk. You can go to program files and in program files, you have to paste that particular folder. So I've pasted mine here and I've renamed it to PHP 8.1.2. Okay, let me view it here if this is what I have. So this is the exact same file. Once you have that done, what you have to do is that you have to open that particular folder, copy this, and you know, inside your Windows search, you have to go for environment variables. Okay, you have to search for environment variables inside the system, and you can open that, click on environment variables again, and in this, you have the system variables, right? Go to system variables, in that you will have your path. If you search for path, you'll have this. Now you have to click on edit, 
and in this you have to add that particular you know location that you have just copied so i copied the location from here right this is what i copied c slash program file slash php so i'll open my you know path variables and in that i'll click on new and i'll paste what i had copied okay then that should actually be added here but i have already done that before as you can see i have done it here once you have that done you can click on ok and ok once again and click on ok once you have that done what you have to do is that you have to open your terminal so let me open mine so in this you can type in php space hyphen version and that should print out your php version and if that is not being printed and if there are any errors what you have to do is that you have to go to your php.ini okay so you have a php.ini file let me increase the size yep you have this file right what you have to do is that you have to open this particular file in your editor mm. wherever you have the editor open that up and in that you have to search for extinction is equal to file name okay not file name i think it is file info yeah okay so this is what it is so when you install it for the first time there's going to be a semicolon here what you have to do is that you have to remove the semicolon and save the file so when you try to save it it's going to ask for your you know admin privileges so click on retry as admin once you have that done you can close off your editor and then you can you know open your new terminal instance so let me close this off and open the terminal once again let me zoom in type in php hyphen version it's a double hyphen not single hyphen and that should print out your php version right so once you have that done what you can do is that you can install your composer so let's go back to our downloads let's go to the downloads and click on composer setup mm -hmm. so it's going to ask whether you want to install it for all the users or not and it's recommended so you can click on that so you don't need to check the developer mode click on next and as you can see it is showing your php executable file which you had you know previously set up as well so it was set up under the program files right so that location is being shown here so you can click on next and click on next again and that should you know start the installation process so once you have that done then composer should be you know present onto your system right so mm. i already have mine set up so i'm not going to do it again now what you can do is that you can open your terminal and you can type in composer and if you type that out something like this should pop up that means that composer is installed on your system all right so now we're ready to create a laravel project so let's go back to the documentation let's go to laravel and as you can see here we are done with installing php and we also have composer set up right so everything is done now we can use composer to create a new laravel project so now let's copy this command and let's go to the terminal and in here let's paste it out and here what you can do is that you can remove the last example hyphen app and you can just type in you know uh, the project name that you want to create so before doing that let's first not you know uh, type it out here instead let's go to the location wherein we are gonna you know actually create the project right so let me go back to my local disk c in that i have a projects folder you can create this wherever you want but i have it set it up here inside the packet code folder i'll be creating my new project right so let me open my terminal instance here once again let's zoom in now let me paste that command and then remove the example hyphen app then you have to type in the folder name or the application name so in this case i want to create the application which is going to be a blog right so i'll type in blog and i'll click on enter so what happens is that sometimes you'll have a few errors when you're trying to create a laravel application using composer and to resolve those errors mainly you have to do what we had previously done by uncommenting that line instead of php.ini so if you had done that previously then you'll not have any errors in you know while installation of laravel through composer but if you're having the errors then you might need to you know uncomment that line which i had shown previously if you do that you'll not have any errors in composer and laravel will be you know creating that new project successfully so as you can see the project has been created now what you can do is that you can open the project right so i'll use my vs code right so it is created inside of this okay let's close it off let's not do that let's go to the blog in here let's type in the code to open that particular folder all right so now we have everything set up here okay so let's not go into the folder structure but instead what we're going to do is that we're going to open the terminal instance once again let's clear the screen off now in this what i'm going to do is that i'm going to first start the laravel application and the process of doing that is by typing in php space 
artisan d-i-s-n serve so it's php artisan serve a-r-t-i-s-a-n so if you type that out and if you click on enter it's going to start the laravel application server and as you can see right now it is on port 8000 at this particular ip address and this particular ip address references to your local host right so if i open my browser once again and if i type in localhost colon 8000 if i type that out and click on enter that is going to open my laravel application and this ui that you're seeing here right now is you know the default ui that you get when you create a new laravel application so this particular IP address is the same as localhost 8000, right? So that's what you have to remember. All right, so now with that, we're pretty much done with creating a new Laravel application and we're done with setting up everything. So in the next video, we'll be understanding the folder structure and also we'll start off with creating the UI for the blog application. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have liked video see until now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.